Hello and welcome to this lecture on designing safer access to schools. My name is Nikita Luke and I'm a senior project associate with the Health and Road Safety team at the World Resources Institute. Let us start off by understanding why we need to focus on children and why it's important to cater to their needs. Despite the fact that children use roads, the road environment is rarely developed with the consideration for their needs. Some children work, play, cycle and walk on the road and this exposure makes them vulnerable to traffic. The result is millions of fatal and disabling injuries each year. Let us keep in mind that around 60,000 children die due to road crashes in India every year. Every day, around 93% of the world's children under the age of 15 breathe air that's so polluted that it affects their health and well being. It stunts their brain and affects their health in ways that we can even imagine. This is inexcusable. Every child should be able to breathe clean air. So how can we save and improve the quality of life for children? The solution is simple. We designed child-friendly cities. And how do we do this? We work with local communities and governments to create a healthy and safe urban landscape that caters to the needs for children. And what is the result? The result can be a safer, healthier and cleaner environment for people of all ages and a more thriving city overall. Children and young people have the same general human rights and adults and also specific needs that recognize their special needs. Every child has the right to safe streets, clean air, education, play and exploration, uh, personal safety, equity to use the city and thrive, and of course, to be heard. So let us look into what key features make a child-friendly city. Lots of open green space. Neighborhood green spaces can be key to enhancing both mental and physical well-being. Children with easy access to nature and green spaces have reduced stress levels. They have the increased ability to concentrate, improve academic performance, and the reduced risk of obesity. The green spaces can also improve air quality. Safe walking and cycling infrastructure. Around 60,000 children die from road accidents in India each year, and many of these children are pedestrians. Across Asia, for every road fatality, four children are permanently disabled. Ensuring safe access for children to schools and parks is vital. Providing safe walking and cycling infrastructure not only prevents road injuries and fatalities, but also allows children to feel safe comfortable and encourages independent travel. Low speed zones. Creating special low speed zones in areas heavily used by pedestrians and children reduces road traffic injuries. Areas around playgrounds, parks, schools require special attention. Managing speed infrastructure such as speed humps, roundabouts, road narrowing, rumble strips should be implemented to reduce vehicle speeds if a broad, broad overall scheme to lower speeds is not possible, even minor changes can help make a difference. Car-free streets. Car-free streets are opportunities to revive, liven, and transform neighborhoods. Car parking spaces and vacant street corners can be converted to areas for games, leisure activities, while the streets are taken over by pedestrians and cyclists of all ages. It can also create new areas for children to play. Street closures are a great concept in neighborhoods that lack green spaces and parks for children to play. Safe school zones. In Hyderabad, 25% of boys and 11% of girls aged 11 to 14 reported a road traffic injury on their way to school, which is why it's important for areas around schools to be equipped with good conditions for walking and cycling, as well as designated pickup and drop off points for children. Clear traffic signs and road markings should, be, should, be, uh, should warn drivers that they're entering a special school zone. Clean air. Due to their height, young children are exposed to 30% more black carbon from vehicle exhaust than adults. Clean air zones can improve air quality in and around areas like schools and residential communities by discouraging vehicle idling, restricting entry for dirtier vehicles, and encouraging cleaner modes of transport and green infrastructure. 
So as you must have realized by now, the benefits of a child-friendly city go beyond children and adds overall value to the citizens' lives. A child-friendly approach to city planning has the potential to unite a range of progressive agendas, including health, well-being, sustainability, equity, and safety, and to act as a catalyst for urban innovation in cities around the world. My colleague Rohit will briefly walk you through the next segment of this lecture on the importance of safe access to schools for children. Over to you, Rohit. Thank you, Nikita, for setting the context so wonderfully. And hello, everyone. I'm Rohit Taf. I'm an urban designer and a manager at WRI India's Urban Transport and Road Safety Program. An important subset of child-friendly cities include providing safer access to schools. And this is mainly because children spend a minimum of six hours per day in school for nearly 250 days a year, which is approximately 1,500 hours per year per child. A significant amount of time is also spent to commute to and from school. And in cities like Mumbai, this time is around 1 to 1.5 hours per day per child, which again is a huge number. The data suggests that 40% of child injuries happen on public streets. And every day, 43 children die due to road traffic crashes in Indian cities. So the question is, do we really want our future generation to commute to school in such an unsafe environment? As access to education is every children's right, so should be the safer access to school. And hence, we need to focus on providing safer access to school. Moreover, safer access to school can provide safer pedestrian environment, thus reinforce the right to feel safe while on the street. It can promote walking to school, thus reduce traffic congestion, and also the air and noise pollution levels. And it can promote uh, physical activity in children, thus introduce healthier way of living life at a very young age. When providing safer access to schools at WRI India, we follow an approach uh, consisting of three steps. That is, first is count it, second is change it, and third is scale. Count it involves comprehensive assessment of child safety in cities, that is, analyzing the qualitative and quantitative data to identify uh, schools or the areas which need immediate attention, and selecting one or two schools to change it by enhancing safety around the schools through preliminary demonstrations, allowing flexibility to modify and improve. That is mainly by using the uh, principles of tactical urbanism. So lighter, cheaper and quicker means to transform the street into a safer pedestrian environment, focusing at children's requirements. And finally, creating buying and positively impacting decision makers to scale up the children's road safety attempts. So far, we have been using this approach across various countries and cities in the Global South. And for the sake of today's lecture, we will be explaining the case from Sao Paulo, Brazil and Mumbai, India. And to get it started, I would like to invite my colleague Andresa to explain the case in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Over to you, Andresa. Thank you, Rohit. Hello, everyone. I'm Andresa Ribeiro, and I am an ICT mobility analyst in the city's program of WRI Brazil. Today, I will present the Education Territories Program, which is an initiative of São Paulo Municipality in Brazil and in which WRI has been a partner since 2009. This partnership has been possible due to financial support from Bloomberg Philanthropies as part of Bloomberg Initiative for Global Road Safety and the Bernard Van Leer Foundation. So, this is a program based on the idea that the city can be an inducer of early childhood development. So here for kids and all children between zero and six years old. Through the creation of space aimed for children and their caregivers, which will stimulate the cognitive ability, the logical reasoning and motor coordination, the project promotes sensory experience and coexistence with the community. This is a project with a robust institutional support. First, it was included in the early childhood plan, then it was highlighted in the road safety plans and action, and finally included in the plan of goals of the city of 2019-2020 to ensure its implementation. There are 10 educational territories located in the most vulnerable communities of the city. And in 2018, a pilot project was carried out in Company for Square in Jardim Angela district, to test the initiative. 
This place was chosen due to the high number of kids attending to early childhood schools. 54% of resident children in the surroundings of Campolim Square attend to one of the seven schools close by, and most of them walk until there. The implementation included traffic calming measures, the refurbishment of the square, interactive wall and floor painting along the trails, and the really important initiative of developing educational activities in partnership with neighboring schools to, active, to activate the territory and engage the community. The territories are based in a combination of trails and educational stations, places that provide more interaction opportunities and for kids to play on their way. Here we have an image of a trail. To make the law interactive, a painting for kids to measure themselves and a river that guides them from the school gates to the safe crosswalk spot. As a pilot for the educational station, we had the refurbishment of the square that received new plates and toys, and also a special place designed for their caregivers to rest and relax. When the second phase of this program started, we realized we would need to deal with a very different context. We have some territories where topography is a challenge, some places with more or less infrastructure. So how to define the intervention spot? Primarily, the interventions are located in the school entering gate, then on its uh, connection to pedestrians' desired crossing lines, connection to bus stops, and adequate in all the measures to the topography conditions. Here we have an illustration of school gate treatment. To avoid kids to run over the street, getting the risk of being hit by vehicles, we advance the crosswalk and guide kids and fill their bipedal planters. In places where the sidewalk is narrow and we can't expand them, we could use smaller planters or fences in the last case. To treat the close by intersection, as, um, as the photo shows in here, we increase visibility and reduce the crossing distance implementing curb extension, also moderating vehicle speed, and we always try to include planters and vegetation to qualify the urban space and promote shadow. In the second phase of the project, a special design was developed to the urban furniture. And here we highlight the importance of realizing the different needs of kids in different ages. From the left stage to the walker phase, interaction and autonomy increases. And so the stimulus are different too. These flexible modules were developed to be used individually or grouped, and they form the main interactive place for kids to play. They are part of the educational station those spots placed in strategic points of the trails for caregivers to rent and kids to play. Special pavement modules were also designed to easily identify the territory and some count with textures for touching direction. Some special modules for wall treatment were also developed, allowing climbing and touching activity. Sao Paulo has been making its way to implement safer space for kids. Here I brought another example of school areas intervention called Safe School Roots. This case is an interim intervention in José Bonifácio district, located in the east portion of the city. This place, selected, this place was selected for the intervention and it counts with 4,000 students, seven schools, and a rent house. This street, particularly, lacked safe crossing opportunities, and verified high vehicular speeds. In 2018, using paintings, such cones, and planters, a chicane was implemented after participative workshops with the community. The chicane was chosen to increase the horizontal deflection on the street and to make the lanes narrower. The data collected here showed a 35% reduction on average speed and 80% of pedestrians had to feel safe after intervention, comparing to 30% before. Here we see the number of kids engaged in the intervention crossing the new chicane with a pedestrian refugee island to protect them. 
And here we have a sense of scale on how long this graph was for them before the intervention. The other intervention spots this intersection that received the main roundabout to count trap close to a school gate. Here, the sidewalk were also expanded in some places, and kids got more space to play or simply walk comfortably together with their caregivers. Now I'll hand it to Rohit, which will explain an example from Mumbai. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, Andresa, and hello again, everyone. Now, this part of the lecture will briefly shed some light on how we can provide safer access to schools in the Indian context with an example from Mumbai, uh, which we are WRI India are working on. The vision for this project is to provide safer environment for children commuting to and from school to child-friendly street design intervention. So while working on uh, safer access to schools project, the methodology shall include five main features. First is of identifying um, the school which needs immediate attention, followed by Assessment of the school area in order to understand the safety risks faced by all users, followed by engaging with the stakeholders in order to create buy-in as well as to understand the aspirations of stakeholders who are directly or indirectly related to the school area, followed by uh, analyzing the data collected in the stakeholder engagement and providing design solutions. And the last one is of implementation, monitoring, and evaluation, which is similar to the case in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where using tactical urbanism measures, uh, the design could be implemented and um, measured for its workability. So for this effort in Mumbai, the school identified is the Christchurch School in the Baikala precinct of e -board. Now this e -board has 73 institutions, so out of which this particular school is selected mainly because of the parameters which you can see on the screen. It, it has around 3,600 students coming to the school at, uh, on any weekday, which is a huge number. The school is in proximity um, to the Khadapalsi Junction, which is considered as one of the highest intersections in the neighborhood. The school is very well connected to public transport, that is the ESP buses, etc. Um, there are a lot of informal activities, a lot of mixed uses of land, uh, which are observed around the school. Um, so it has a very vibrant um, character. Um, and lastly, um, the condition of the road. So the road, which is the approach um, road for the school, is Mirza Valley Road. It is one of the important um, connector and a sub, -sub arterial road, giving access to the um, Nafpada precinct of Baikala neighborhood. In terms of the physical uh, character of um, the road, the school area assessment um, helps us understand uh, how the road is used during the assembly and departure hours of the school. You can see in this particular photo how chaotic the situation right in, in front of the school access gate is. And if I zoom into this corner, I can point out these two little girls struggling to cross the street amidst this chaos. The school area study revealed that Mirza Valley Road is extremely unsafe for school children. Not just the crossing, but the pedestrian infrastructure in, in terms of the footpath is also not adequate. As you see in these photos, there are a lot of hindrances due to the informal activities, spillover of the uh, shop frontages, as well as two wheelers parked across the length of the footpath, which makes its usability uh, reduced in terms of uh, pedestrian walkability. The footpaths giving access to the schools are also normally full of hindrances due to the informal activities, as well as the spillovers from the shop. And also along the stretch of this road, you can see two wheelers parked, which is uh, which reduce the walkability on the footpath. In terms of the parameters of the access road to the school, uh, the existing width is 15 meters, but due to the irregular parking and curbside activities. It has been reduced to around 12 meters effective carriage frame on both the sides. Same thing is regarding the footpath. Due to the ancillary activities, the parking on the footpath, the width of the footpath has been reduced from 4 meter to 1.5 meter or even less than that, which is not adequate for school children or anyone to walk. Now the next stage was of identifying the stakeholders 
mainly to create buy-in as well as to engage with them to understand their aspirations. For that, we first reached out with local NCGM ward officer. Once we created a buy-in from her, we reached out to the uh, local politician, that is the municipal councillor of uh, the Baikala area. And um, after we created buy-in from him, we reached out to the school principal. Through school principal, we got access to the parents of um, the students and uh, we had a focus group discussion with them. Followed by that, we got access to 60 students between the age 6 to 16 to conduct focus group discussion, mainly to understand what change children want to see on their commute to school. This was the process uh, which was very important in order to empower the children, make them decision makers, as well as involve them in the planning process. Now, before we started with the focus group discussion, um, we tried to understand what exactly are children and how to understand them before you design any kind of infrastructure for them. So there are two main um, categories. One is the children's anthropometry and second is their cognitive development. Children at young age have varied cognitive skills, limited understanding of vehicle speed, limited range of vision and range of walking. Because of their smaller size and height, Children can see, relate, and identify different things, and this qualitative information can inform decision makers to a great extent while providing child friendly infrastructure. So, while working with children of Christchurch School, the focus group discussion included a focused uh, photo walk around the school, and based on their cognitive skills and anthropometry, these children were divided into three groups that is, 6 to 9, 10 to 12 and 13 to 16. A walk with each group was organized to understand what children see at their eye level and if they like it or dislike it. They were given two frames, one was green, one was red. The things which they liked were uh, seen from um, the green frame and the things which they do not like or do not associate with were seen from the red, red frame. The outcome of this walk reveals that various interesting um, elements uh, such as um, colorful plants, uh, bright colored food buses, or clean and tidy sidewalks or footpaths, um, and lots of natural elements are something which children uh, associate themselves with. They like these aspects. Whereas um, dirty footpaths, parkings on the footpaths, um, you know, not having maintenance infrastructure, these are the things which children dislike. The second part of the focus group discussion included visualization exercise for age group six to nine in order to understand what change children want to see on their school street. And for this, the children were provided a photograph of their school street and they were asked to draw elements which they like to see on their school street. And again, very interesting information was revealed uh, from this exercise. For age group 10 to 12, the exercise included mind map making uh, to understand what children observe and how they want to imagine their school journey. And again, a very interesting data was collected. For example, a lot of children uh, pointed out uh, that they see a lot of cars, a lot of traffic, a lot of honking um, on their commute to school from their respective houses. Whereas in their imagination map, they try to show a lot of greenery, cycle lane, or a um, uh, lot of signage, a lot of murals, a lot of beautiful elements which can enhance their experience on their way to. For age group 13 to 16, the exercise included cause barrier analysis mainly to understand road safety related barriers, causes and solutions from children's point of view. And for this, fishbone analysis was the method used. All the responses collected during the photo walk and focus group discussion reveal seven main categories to address while providing safer access to schools. These categories include access to nature, accessibility infrastructure such as pedestrian ramps or uh, tactile paving for visually challenged um, people, providing infrastructure uh, related to maintenance of the footpath as well as streets, providing road safety measures, providing infrastructure to maintain discipline on access to roads, providing design which goes with the aesthetics of children and lastly providing activities which can enhance children's experience on their commute to school and which can encourage them to walk to school. These are some of the findings for each age group. 
For example, for the age group six to nine, the visual reference frame is mostly horizontal. Lighting for the natural elements such as plants, birds, size is obvious in terms of um, the data which uh, is collected from them. Their aesthetics include bright colored objects, uh, which include signal colors, yellow school bus, candy shop logo, flowering plants, etc. And a very few students had understanding of the road safety issues and the risks associated. For the age group 10 to 12, the findings included that their classification of likes and dislikes are driven by their learning from school. Their visual reference frame is also horizontal. That means their sight line, what they see right in front of their eyes, is uh, what it is limited to. They were able to identify environmental issues they face, such as air and noise pollution. And some of them were able to highlight the road safety issues they face, that is, the difficulty while crossing the street due to the speed of the vehicle. And for the age group 13 to 16, the findings included the visual reference frame being beyond the street with an ability to connect visually, physically, and emotionally to broader surroundings and with an ability to identify problems and provide direct solutions. The solutions range from changes in the design to changes in the management system, from more awareness amongst people about street safety and civic duty to better technologically aid for maintenance. The solutions range from changes in the design to changes in the management system, from more awareness amongst people about road safety and civic duty to better technological aid for maintenance. So after the stakeholder engagement and focus group discussion, we as designers and road safety experts worked on the uh, school zone design and this is how the proposed school zone looks like. You can see the entry to the Christchurch school and in front of that a vibrant raised crossing. It is raised because raised crossing can reduce the speeds of the vehicles which are uh, passing this area in order to create a low speed zone for uh, children to safely cross the street. It also has waiting area for parents, it has pick and drop area, and it has designated parking spots. The school zone included walkable footpaths, and in this photo you can see the existing um, reality as well as the possibility of the implementation. It had barrier free infrastructure. It had safe, vibrant, and raised crossings. It has vibrant and playful elements along the edge of the footpath. It has access to nature given at the eye level of uh, the school children. It has organized pick and drop area and parking area. And lastly, it has enhanced experience for children with introduction of educational features and also playful elements along the edge of the footpath. The next stage in this project will be to enhance safety and children's experience to tactical urbanism trials to demonstrate the change like you saw in the example from South Park. Finally, I would like to conclude by quoting Jan Gels who said, and I quote, if you see a city with many children using the city's public spaces, it's a sign that it's a good quality place for all the people. Which means, if you design streets for children, to design streets for all the users. If you have any questions of you or if you want to follow up on any aspects on uh, today's lecture, then feel free to reach out to us. Thank you very much for your attention.